Joe, your book is about fascia in terms of both anatomy and movement. So is it fundamentally a practical book or purely an academic one? That's a really interesting question, Amanda, because um, the fascia we now know is the basis of the matrix of our structure. It is part of the suite of connective tissues that we have in the body that hold muscles to bones. And traditionally we've always talked about the musculoskeletal system, when in fact muscles and the bones and everything in our bodies are held together with this internal matrix. My question in the book, or the one that certainly haunted my practice for years and in fact inspired the conversations that brought this book about, was how can I make what I'm learning intellectually and academically make sense in the classroom practically? So the honest answer to your question is both. In the beginning, we ask questions about the research and the intellectual academic side of anatomy, but in a very experiential way. And in part two of the book, we apply it practically. So yes, both. Brilliant. And the book includes extensive scientific research. So who would you say have been the key people who've influenced your writing? Um, partly the yoga that I was trained in, uh, Van der Scarabelli's approach, and a number of teachers in that field, including Peter Blackaby and uh, John Sturck. Um, my structural integration training in hands-on manual therapy with Tom Myers, who's been a great influence in everything I do and a wonderful teacher in my life. Um, obviously that's from Ida Rolf. And bringing people like Robert Schleip into the frame over the last several years, I've had the privilege of facilitating his workshops. Dr. Stephen Levin, who is an orthopaedic surgeon known as the father of biotensegrity, and research done with people like uh, osteopaths like Graham Scar, who looks at geodesic geometry in the human body, and another person, Tom Flemings, has been a great guide. And then on the other side of life, if you like, the more mystical side that yoga also incorporates, I've been very privileged to be in communication with um, Kenneth Snelson, the artist, who originated the term floating compression structure, which is actually where um, Buckminster Fuller coined the term tensegrity, which is where the structure of the fascia comes into the book. The other side of it being Carolyn Mace, who was also one of my teachers over many years, uh, working with the anatomy of the spirit. The question of all of those elements influencing me, all the research in both medical and what we might call the metaphysical realm, have come together and for me come to practice in, in the work on the mat with the people, the individuals, the very different styles and mannerisms of each person we deal with. So the research is, is from everywhere and you know I've been very privileged with the people that I've, I've asked about their research who've given me a personal take on that um, way of working with it. Great. And the research has indicated that fascia is considered to be our sixth sense. How does this link with your book and indeed yoga? Great question. Fascia, we can't say fascia is our sixth sense. It doesn't quite make sense to say that. Mm. What we're understanding is that the three-dimensional fascial matrix of the body, now that particularly Robert Schleip's research has shown, and many others, he, he, Robert would be the first one to say to you that the uh, Siegfried Mensa and other leading lights in, in the fascia research world have endorsed this. But the net result of all that research is we're understanding the fascial matrix as the largest sensory organ of the body. Now this has profound significance in terms of how we sense ourselves in space. Now yoga is devoted to our sense of ourselves in space, our internal sense of ourselves breathing the prana, the pranayama, the, the, the five pranas, and the sense of where we are in space in terms of the postures. Mm. So for me they're so inextricably linked and what I'm keen about is, is how each individual expresses that and how each teacher brings it out for them. So on that line, is fascia changing how we research and see movement patterns? Completely, absolutely yes. And what the book does is it seeks to ask the questions that sometimes I think we're all dying to ask. You know when there's a room full of people and somebody doesn't want to ask the stupid question? Well, I ask the stupid question. 
And I may get egg on my face for asking the stupid question, but in the book, I've asked those questions, I've asked it of key researchers, and they've been so generous with their time, and they're writing back to me, and it's not just a story of their answers, it's a story of how I've tried to apply their answers, and express it in the book in a very useful way for teachers. So the book itself takes you a little bit through the story of that, but invites you to use it symbolically for your own work, so it, it links everything together.